TV. You know something? Huh? Have you guys heard of Stream Boss? It's a new IPTV provider that gives you over 5,000 channels for only $20 a month. <laughs> cool! $20 for live TV, local TV, movies, TV shows, pay-per-views, and so much more. Huh? What? If you have a Fire Stick, Smart TV, or streaming device, then head on over to streamboss.com to begin your setup process. Peace, world's MREC for MREC TV. I got a special guest in the building. He's no stranger to the show. My brother, could you please introduce yourself, even though I know who you is, but let the people know who you be. Yes, sir. I uh, salam alaikum. Peace be unto you. Once again, I'm Brother Abdul Haq Muhammad, the student minister of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for the Muhammad Mosque of Islam, number 25, which is located here in the city of North New Jersey. Thank you again, Brother Enrek, for the opportunity. You know, we always deeply grateful and highly honored for the privilege and the pleasure to speak to you and all of your listeners. So thank you again, brother. You're welcome, my brother, and it's an honor to have you back on my show. So thank you. I'm always honored, brother, at the privilege. Likewise, my, my brother. My brother Likewise, my brother. So what's going on with you, my brother, currently? I, I want to ask about your well-being, first and foremost. You know, uh, God is the greatest. Brother mm -hmm. Enrek, in a time of so much uncertainty, a lot of anxiety and grief, uh, so many people going without food, don't know where their next meal is going to come from. Um, so many of our people have lost loved ones. You know, they, they're in mourning, they're grieving. So I thank God much that my family is healthy, my immediate family, my extended family. Of course, I've lost a few close mm. um, colleagues and you know, I haven't really lost any close relatives, but I lost, you know, some people that were very dear to me. Our student minister, Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, which was the minister of Muhammad Mas number seven in New York City. We lost him to COVID uh, oh. last year. So, you know, I'm I praying for him and, my yeah, his family. But overall, I see that, you know, God has been very great. As the scripture says, uh, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. And that God will prepare a table for us in the midst of our enemies. So I feel, you know, that the table has been prepared and the quarantine has been, you know, I would say overall, for the most part, it's been good to me outside of not being able to move, you know, as frequently as I would like to move and being confined inside. I have taken this uh, time to do a lot of self-reflection, self-examination, mm -hmm. self-correction. As I was talking to you earlier, working on my diet, studying, using this time wisely, as yes. the scripture teaches us in the book of Isaiah, go inside your chambers until this indignation from almighty God, you know, passes over. So I thank, you know, God for his blessings and his mercy. The dude, Charleston J. White, has some volatile and disrespectful things to say about the minister as well as the nation. And um, I would say brothers was disturbed by it. Yes, sir. Uh, well, as I was sharing with you earlier, Brother Enrek, I wasn't surprised at what was being said. I was surprised at who was saying it. Again, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, in my judgment, it's my belief that he's a man of the scriptures, Bible and Quran. He's a man who was prophesied and predicted to come. And when you read in the Bible and you are reading about various messengers and prophets and warners, the scripture don't only tell you about them, it tell you about the surrounding characters that were around them. It tells you that they would be ridiculed, they would be mocked, they would be lied on, they would be slandered, they would be defamed, they would be hated without a cause. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan kind of taught us this. So I've always been prepared. I've always been aware that these are the things that come with um, following a man like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, knowing that he's going to be misunderstood. He's going to be misrepresented. Um, you know, as the minister have ta taught us that he's been like in a prison, not a physical prison, but the prison of public opinion, because the way that the media have mischaracterized him, have misrepresented him. 
people don't really know who the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is outside of a soundbite. But those who know him, those who have got a chance to eat with him, been taught by him, around him, even his enemies would tell you that he's a man of integrity, a man of character, a man of high morals, a man of dignity. And he's a very transparent man. Um, he's a man of truth and love, you know, and that's what has attracted me to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It's not just what he says, but it's his example. So, again, I was just shocked at uh, who was saying it because I am familiar with our brother. I've watched some of his interviews, and I think that's a lot of the things that he say is very right, very good, uh, what he's intending to do in terms of guiding and helping our youth. Lord knows we need that. So, you know, I, I, I was familiar with him, but I did not know that he had any um, ill will toward the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, you know, so. Got you. Yeah, because it seems personal. Like, I watched the video. I didn't watch all of it. Watched a few minutes of it. And it seemed like maybe he had a personal experience with somebody from the nation that may have rubbed him the wrong way or something. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know the brother personally. Um, I know people who know of him, mm -hmm. you know, but again, I don't have any personal knowledge about the brother in terms of his background and, you know, his experience with us, whether it has been negative one way or the other. So I can't say that uh, he was ill affected by anybody in the nation of Islam. I can't say he was and I can't say he can't. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I don't have any personal knowledge of him. So anything in that regard would be mere speculation on my part. You know, and I'm not here to speculate and I'm not here to indict another black man, you know, who's striving to help our community as he says he is. Mm. You know, I just took issue with his manner of expression, not mm. that he's disagreeing. Because disagreeing in conflict is natural wherever there's human interaction. There's always going to be a difference of opinion, a difference of perspective, you know, a difference of oh. outlook. You know, a lot of times in this work, we let a tactical disagreement make us disagreeable, meaning that we all have the same objective, the same goal. We're trying to save black people, but my tactic may be different from yours. You understand? You may say, well, we want to do it like the Panthers doing it. But we're doing it like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Farrakhan taught us to do it. Same objective, just a different tactic and a different strategy. You know, uh, James Baldwin said that we could disagree and still love one another as long as our disagreement is not rooted in oppression or the denial of my humanity and right to exist. But I think because of our rearing um, in America, coming through the gauntlet of white supremacy, a lot of times we don't know how to disagree without it turning into something violent or us spewing vitriol and hate and raincoat at one another. You understand? We don't know how to, a lot of times, express or articulate our disagreement in a civilized and dignified manner where you don't lose anything and I don't lose anything. But we talk to each other, we get our point across, you understand? We hug and we keep it moving, you know, so. Definitely. So where... Does it go from here? Like, do you reach out to the brother or do the nation reach out to the brother to try to resolve this or? Well, I don't I don't really think that. It is anything that need to be resolved, per se, because it's not an issue on our part in terms of uh, that he has done anything. Physically and harming anyone again, he's speaking his mind, he's speaking his feelings. You understand? Uh, now, why? I don't know. Why he's saying what he's saying about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I don't know. That's something that you would have to ask him, you know. But as a student and follower of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I felt the need to address his tone, um, you know, and what he was saying. I think it was a lot of defamation, a lot of slander, a lot of innuendo. Uh, he wasn't speaking actual facts. I think it was a lot of truth mixed with falsehood. You understand? Um, so, again, I don't know what's his beef or what's his gripe, why he felt the need to do what it is that he was doing. Could it Was it shocking all? Sensationalism? I don't know, because I know social media 
you know, it has created a generation of individuals who practice what they call a lot of yellow journalism, where they don't really search for the truth, but they look at sensationalism, exaggeration, hyperbole, they frame things in a way that will get them the most attention. And they don't do their research or investigate. They just put things out and they don't do their due diligence or they don't scrutinize or authenticate what it is that they're putting out. But because they're trying to get views and it's a monetary value attached to it, you know, they don't do their homework and they don't exercise a certain standard of care. So I know that that is a reality in this modern day and age with YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. We are trying to make a come up. And I'm not saying that's what he's trying to do, but I don't know what warranted his, you know, disrespect of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam in the way that he did and is doing, especially with our track record as it relates to black people in America. Ladies and gentlemen, if you suffer from low libido, poor drive, or subpar bedroom performance, don't skip this ad. Youth Fountain Laboratory, makers of the Plaqueout Nato Kinase Cocktail, has created a powerful dietary supplement, strong enough for men, yet safe enough for women. Introducing Vasoflux, a unique blend of 20 herbs, barks, roots, and compounds designed to turn back the hands of time. Vasoflux is made of ingredients clinically proven to help improve blood flow, lower blood pressure, increase libido for both men and women, improve performance, increase energy and drive, and reduce menopausal symptoms in women while restoring virility in men. For more info, visit Youth Fountain Laboratory at youthfountainlab.com or call toll-free at 1-800-853-7856. And remember, if you want to turn back the clock, try Vasoflux. No, you're the plug and such. You a joke's bound to happen if you slipping or you lacking. I'm gripping on the matin, ready for the action. Shots to make you break dance and have you do a backspin. I got more kicks than karate flicks. My whole team pushing Maserati whips. You all IG like in thotty picks. Shorty pocket broke, but her body fixed. Peace, world. To promote your music or promote your business by placing an ad on MREC TV, contact MREC TV promo, M R E C K T V promo at gmail.com. Peace. Oh, yeah. Subscribe to MREC TV, youtube.com slash MREC TV. I'm gone. MREC. TV. It's got a music.